For those who were involved, it was living hell. Two days without Fortnite, staring at a blank screen. Well, now Fortnite's back online and it has a new chapter. Users began to panic on Sunday when the old landscape blew up, dragging players into a black hole, literally. The hugely popular video game now features a fresh landscape and previously unreleased weapons. Paul LaMonica is with me. Paul, I've spent the break, the commercial break, learning from my uh, younger and more nimble colleagues about how to play this, uh, uh, this game. Uh, but I, I was very taken by what you told me earlier. This was risky of Fortnite to go dark while they prepared for the... Or was it really? Could they always have... Or could they almost have known people would come back? I mean, I, I would have to think that the people at Epic, the company behind Fortnite, probably had an inkling that by doing this, they would clearly risk alienating some of their core gamers and make people get a little panicked about what's happening. I mean, there had been all this hype about season 11 for the game is coming, and instead they turned it around and said, well, forget about that. It's now chapter two of a new iteration of the game. And having this black hole, I mean, Richard, the, the hilarious thing to me about this is that you had people on Amazon-owned Twitch and YouTube, owned by Google Owner Alphabet, staring at live video streams of people, their avatars, just staring at this black hole. And obviously, it was compelling enough to keep people watching and engaged and right. wondering what's next. And right. if you can do that as a media company, because that's what these guys really are now, media, big games are media, it's, you know, a, a feather to, on the cap for doing this. Paul, I, 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 we talked earlier, and I was just learning, of course, that <laughs> there's no entrance fee to play, and the only revenues come from these various accessories that Epic sell you to play with the game. But they're not essential. You don't have to, to pay a penny to do this, but apparently everybody does, and that's, the, uh, and that's where the money... It's a, it's a very strange business model. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, some might argue that it's, you know, no less strange than a media company selling ads and hoping that uh, you get enough clicks to generate more ad revenue. But let's be honest here. Gamers know that to have the optimum experience with these types of games, these titles, they need to have all the bells and whistles to enhance the experience of the game. So Epic, as well as other companies like Electronic Arts that are big in the gaming business, they sell these add-ons. It's a kind of freemium model, if you will, and they generate a lot of money. I mean, Epic Games, which is backed by Tencent, you know, they were said to have brought in over $2.4 billion in revenue in 2018 just from Fortnite alone. So these are, you know, virtual goods in a, a not real environment, but it's very, very real cash for Epic Games. Have you played it? I have not. My kids fortunately don't play it either. They just do all the dances, which I am not going to embarrass myself by replicating <laughs> on live TV. You knew exactly where that was going. Of course, hey, good. sir. Maloka, absolutely. <laughs> no, we've got to find, we're going to have to find a millennial in the office who can teach Egan, you and me, at least how to play this thing. No, my um, kids could do it, but I don't let them play. I just let them do the dances. 